All right, Tide Nation, number one form for your Crimson Tide football news. In my own words, yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. As always, people that daily Super Chat go, $75 daily Super Chat go. I appreciate the love from you guys. And continue to leave a like on the show. Run those likes up. Hit that thumbs up button, making this your network, your channel, your platform and space to talk Bama football. But now... We look at the Crimson Tide defense, and realistically for you, as the Alabama football fan, for you, what is the expectation for this defense? What is the expectation you have for this defense? Is it being top three, top five, top ten, number one defense in the country? Is it you know more so the sacks? Is it more so the turnovers is it more so than non-offensive touchdowns like what is the expectation for you the fan when you look at this Alabama defense and to start things off what is your expectation for Pete Golding right because coach Golding he's back for his fifth year with the Crimson Tide started off in 2018 Uh, he's back for his fourth year as the primary defensive play caller And he has grown each season, contrary to popular belief. People forget sometimes that in 2019, in Golding's first year, he was expecting to have Dylan Moses and Joshua McMillan. He had neither. They both blew their knee out in fall camp. So you looked at Christian Harris and Shane Lee. You got to teach two freshmen how to play the game at the Alabama level. And that was a bit difficult. And even with all of that, if Tua Tonga-Vangoa does not hurt his hip, against Mississippi State, this team more than likely wins a national championship. Then you look at the 2020 campaign, of course, Dylan Moses was not the same coming back from a knee injury, but, you know, Pete Golden was able to do enough to get the defense to the national championship game, and Alabama was an undefeated, perfect national champion. Even last season, I know people look at, well, Steve in the Texas A&M game, and Steve in this game, and Steve in that game, but... After the A&M game, this Bama defense started playing like we thought it would play all season. And it got to the national championship game, and the halftime score was 9-6. to I mean, the guys were teeing off on Stetson Bennett. The offense couldn't move the ball, could not get in the end zone, could not score touchdowns. And that led to, of course, unfortunately, the defense wearing down late. So Pete Golding has made strides. He's made improvements. He's one heck of a recruiter, as you saw in this recent signing class. The thing that I, of course, want to see from him is a growth in uh, gaining more pressure packages, more blitz looks, disguising those blitz looks, hitting home on the quarterback more with those looks, and having those pressure packages create more turnovers and non-offensive touchdowns. That's what I'm looking at in terms of Coach Golding. But as we look at now the defensive front here for Alabama, the expectations for this group, I mean, what are you expecting from the defensive front with Phil Mathis going to the NFL, Brian Ray gone, but you bring everybody else back. I mean, uh, DJ Dale is back, Justin Boigby's back, Byron Young, who's an animal, he's back, Jamaria Latham is back. Uh, Jameel Burroughs is back. Stephon Wynn is back. You've got guys like Tim Keenan III and Anquin Barnes and Damon Payne all back. you got some freshmen in here at the outside. Linebacker positions, there goes Will Anderson and Dallas Turner. They're both back at the inside linebacker position. you got Henry To'o To'o, man in the middle, and Mike linebacker, Jalen Moody, more than likely will be the starter at weak side linebacker. So you, you got players back. You got veteran leadership, you have experience, but what is the expectation for this defensive run when you look at sacks, when you look at tackles for loss, when you look at creating turnovers, forcing fumbles, maybe getting an interception or two, stopping the run, you know, not letting teams score in the red zone. What is the expectation, especially on third down? What is the expectation here for this defensive run when you look at all of this experience back here for the Crimson Tide. For me, my expectation would be way better on third down in terms of getting off the field more 
in the upcoming season start in the spring than what you did last year. Uh, expectation would be getting back to not allowing the opposition to run the football on you. There were moments in 2021 where the opposition was able to line up and run the ball on Alabama. You go back to the national championship game, there were moments where Kirby Smart was like, we're going to run Zamir White right here, and you're not going to stop us. And it happened. There were moments where Kirby Smart was like, we're going to run James Cook right here, and you're not going to stop us. And that happened. And we remember an Alabama football program where running on the Crimson Tide was, uh, that was like, speaking a whole different language like that, 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 that didn't happen that didn't happen Alabama would not allow that to happen so getting back to that but then also uh getting back to you know forcing those fumbles and recovering those fumbles and and taking those turnovers back for touchdowns just being that relentless defensive front to help the secondary out even more that'd be my expectation for the defensive front and then when you look at the secondary the expectations for this defensive backfield. Can this group get back to being that sort of no-fly zone group that you had in 2015, 2016, 2017 under guys like Mel Tucker and Derek Ansley? Can that group get back to that type of production because of talent there with that group? And discussing Eli Ricks coming over, transfer from LSU, the success he had when you discuss – uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry and Kyrie Jackson that got experience last year at the cornerback position. You got Brian Branch and Malachi Moore back at the nickel spot. Daniel Wright is back at the dime position. You got both of your safeties, Jordan Battle and DeMarco Helms both back. And then you have other guys that are waiting to get on the field and get playing time themselves. So for the secondary, where are the expectations here? For me, it's turning to face the football. Turn the face to football, be physical, not too physical, bat the ball down, create some interceptions, uh, uh, not only create some interceptions, but also return those things back for touchdowns. That was one of the big points with Mel Tucker and Derek Ansley. It was not just pick the ball off. You take that thing back to the house, and that's what got U.S. fans on your feet when you saw a Minka Fitzpatrick or an Eddie Jackson or a Ronnie Harrison or a Cyrus Jones or a Marlon Humphrey or an Anthony Averitt or a Levi Wallace, just, just those former players, when they got their hands on the ball, they knew what to do with it. They were going back the other way, booking it for a touchdown, and that got y'all hyped up. So when I look at this particular secondary right here, uh, the expectations play the ball, be instinctive playing the football, create those turnovers, uh, create those pass deflections, uh, hitting home on blitzes when they're being called for the blitz, just things of that number. Because when I look at this defense as a whole, this defense has the makings to be a top three, top five defense across the board. Scoring defense, pass defense, run defense, pass efficiency defense, third down defense, sacks, red zone defense. I mean, this this group across the board can be top three, top five when you look at college football. And that's when this group plays at its full potential, at its full capability, at its full power. And that starts with, of course, Pete Golding taking another step forward as a defensive play caller, improving his blitz packages, adding to those, disguising those looks, hitting home on those looks, and creating those turnovers and touchdowns off the mistakes of the opposition. And I think getting uh, Todd Grantham in here as he starts this week as a defensive analyst, that's huge. I mean, w with what he did as a defensive coordinator, at Georgia, at Florida, at Mississippi State, and at Louisville. I mean, the mastermind of um, cre of having blitz looks, of having pressure packages, disguising those formations, and hitting home on the quarterback, stopping the run, but then also creating those turnovers. 
and turning them into big plays with him behind the scenes, sharpening up Golding even more, bouncing ideas off of Coach Saban, maybe even bouncing ideas off, you know, a couple of the players. Like, having Grantham's mind in here is a big deal. You want to make sure you're on the top of your game. You bring other guys in that are at the top of their de- of their game, and they can help you. They can help you. They can make you successful. They can make you good. They can make you even better in sharpening that tool shed a bit. So I'm excited about this defense. Hopefully, uh, from start to finish, beginning in spring football, it can play to its full potential. (laughs) 